Before we get started, I want to tell you about Achievable, which has the best SIE and Series 7 learning program available on the market today. It comes with easy and fun to read materials, thousands of practice questions, and a personalized learning system that ensures that you learn the material as efficiently and effectively as possible so that you pass the exam on the first try. Try it today completely for free by clicking the links below in the description. Now, let's get started. Securities like stocks, bonds, and mutual funds are bought and sold every day the financial markets are open. And there are two general ways that securities can be traded, either on a negotiable or redeemable basis. Let's break down both and make sure that we understand exactly what each one means. Most of the securities you will learn about are negotiable, and this includes common stock, preferred stock, corporate bonds, municipal bonds, US government bonds, exchange traded funds, exchange traded notes, options are even negotiable. When an investor wants to purchase or sell any of these investments, they will place a trade directly through their brokerage firm. Companies like Fidelity, Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, and Vanguard are examples of traditional brokerage firms that customers can place trades through. There are also newer companies like Robinhood that are built for the more technologically savvy and young investor that's trying to get into the stock market. Investors open accounts and place trades through these companies, which then connects their customers with other investors in the market. This is known as a type of agency transaction where a brokerage firm is connecting their customer with another investor in the market and sometimes collects a commission. Now on that note, a lot of brokerage firms today are not charging commissions on trades for things like stock, and that's mostly thanks to Robinhood, which came on the scene a few years ago and began offering commission-free trades to their investors. And due to the competitive environment to gain customers in this field, a lot of the brokerage firms brought their commission schedule down to zero in order to compete. I would expect on the exam for you to see an agency-based transaction that involves a brokerage firm connecting their customer with another investor in the market. I would expect you to still see them reference a commission being charged for that type of trade, just so you know. Bottom line, negotiable securities trade in the market between investors. And that is not how it works with redeemable securities, which we're about to jump into now. Redeemable securities involve trades directly with the issuer. And real quick, let's make sure that we feel comfortable with that term issuer. Issuers are companies and organizations that sell securities uh, and raise capital or money when they do that. For example, Nike is the issuer of Nike stock or JP Morgan is the issuer of a JP Morgan bond, or the US government is the issuer of a treasury bond. Those are issuers. And if a security is redeemable, that means that the trade is occurring, not directly with another investor that's selling that, but directly with the issuer themselves. There are two prominent redeemable securities to be aware of for the exam, and they are open-in management companies, also known as mutual funds, and unit investment trusts. Both are portfolios of securities that offer their investors the chance to diversify themselves across multiple different investments with one single purchase. For example, the Fidelity Large Cap Stock Fund is an actively managed mutual fund that invests into large and well-established companies. A single purchase of this fund will provide an investor exposure to a significant number of stocks. So let's say that you want to purchase several shares of the Fidelity Large Cap Stock Fund. You will go to your brokerage firm and place the trade directly through them and they may charge you a sales charge potentially, which is kind of like a commission, but on mutual fund transactions. And then once that sales charge is collected, if applicable, they will then send the purchase request along with the money directly to Fidelity. So if you have a Fidelity account, of course there's no forwarding the money to Fidelity because you're making the purchase directly through that company. And in most cases in that situation, there will be no sales charge assessed on that purchase. Once Fidelity receives the transaction request, they will allow the customer to purchase shares directly from them at the next net asset value. 
This is different than negotiable securities. Remember, negotiable securities trade in the market at whatever the going market price is. Redeemable securities, most of the time, are purchased at their net asset value. The net asset value of a fund is found by calculating all the fund's assets, which will include typically all its securities in the portfolio, maybe some cash in the portfolio, and then subtracting out the fund's liabilities, which would include cost of running the fund and any kind of redemption requests. That's when investors sell their shares back to the mutual fund, and we'll talk more about that here in a second. But again, we take the fund's assets, subtract out the liabilities, and then we adjust that on a per share basis, and that is what the net asset value is. In a nutshell, the NAV reflects the overall value of the fund on a per share basis. At that point, Fidelity then sends all those shares back to the brokered firm that uh, submitted the trade, and now the investor owns shares of that mutual fund. They will then hold those shares of that mutual fund as long as they want, and eventually at some point down the line, they will then sell those shares. When they are ready to sell those shares, they will submit a redemption request, again, through their brokerage firm, and that redemption request tells Fidelity that the investor's looking to sell those shares. Now, that sale request does not go to the market. They're not selling those shares to another investor, that redemption request goes directly back to the issuer, being Fidelity in this situation. Fidelity takes the redemption request and cashes out the shares at whatever the next available net asset value is. The proceeds are then sent back to the brokerage firm and that brokerage firm then takes that cash and puts it directly into their customer's account. And that's how a redeemable security trade occurs. Now that we've discussed negotiable and redeemable securities, Let's look at both from a big picture perspective to make sure we understand the differences. Negotiable securities involve trades with other investors. When an investor submits a trade to buy Nike stock, they're buying that stock from another investor in the market, not directly from Nike themselves. Nike originally sold those shares, most likely in their initial public offering in the past, and collected the proceeds from that sale. But once that sale occurred, those shares now trade on a negotiable basis in the stock market. Now, on the other side, redeemable securities involve trades directly with the issuer. When an investor purchases a redeemable security like a mutual fund, maybe from Fidelity, they trade directly with the issuer being Fidelity. And when they're ready to sell those shares later, they will submit a redemption request that will go directly to Fidelity and Fidelity will cash out their shares at the next net asset value. Essentially, the investor is trading directly with the issuer and that is the case with every redeemable security. Trades of negotiable securities involve commissions, whereas trades of redeemable securities involve sales charges. And although they're very similar in terms of what they are, those are definitely two different terms you wanna keep in two separate buckets. And last, most securities are negotiable, which include things like stocks, bonds, and ETFs. On the redeemable side, we really only need to remember mutual funds and unit investment trusts as our two primary redeemable securities.